Hey there, Earthling! If you think you're special because you live on the only habitable planet out there, think again. What makes a planet suitable for life? A whole bunch of factors, like the planet itself, its neighbors, and the star it orbits. A habitable planet is basically one that can sustain life, with things like access to water, energy sources, and nutrients. Earth, for example, is in the sweet spot, known as the habitable zone, where it can have liquid water on its surface. But just being in this zone doesn't automatically mean a planet is habitable. Factors like crazy levels of radiation can make a planet uninhabitable, even if it has the right temperature. So the bottom line is, we need water, something to orbit, and a set of nutrients of chemical origin that can be found in Mendeleev's periodic table of the elements or those funky snacks you buy. Look at this exoplanet called K218b. Mm. The term exoplanet doesn't mean that it's exotic. It just states that this planet is located outside the solar system. Most planets need to orbit something. Unless we're talking about rogue planets, that are basically planet-sized things floating around in space but not orbiting around any star or brown dwarf. Instead of our Sun, K218b orbits a red dwarf called K218. It's not your average star you can see with the unaided eye in the night sky. This one is hard to observe because of its low luminosity. K218b is indeed a planet far, far away. It's located 38 parsecs away from Earth. One parsec is somewhere around 19 trillion miles. Hey, you do the math. Hint, lots of zeros. K218b is a sub-Neptune, meaning that it has a smaller radius than Neptune. However, it's much bigger than our humble abode. It's about 2.6 times the radius of Earth. As for the weight, K218b is way chunkier than Earth. It's about 8 times as massive. It takes 33 days for this planet to go around its star, and it gets just about as much starlight as Earth gets from the Sun. This planet has a light intensity of 1.28 times greater than Earth and has an equilibrium temperature of 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Nope, it doesn't mean that K218b feels like New York in January. It only gives us an idea of the theoretical temperature put there. The planetary equilibrium temperature is basically the temperature a planet would have if it was perfectly balanced in terms of radiation. It's when the amount of heat leaving a planet is the same as the amount of heat coming in. Now, the trillions of miles that set us apart aren't a problem for potent telescopes, such as the Kepler Space Telescope that discovered this planet and the James Webb Space Telescope that is studying its atmosphere now. In 2019, scientists announced that they had found water vapor in the atmosphere of exoplanet K218b which sparked widespread interest toward this outlandish world. Four years later, the Webb telescope detected carbon dioxide and methane swirling in the air of this guy. Carbon dioxide is basically our best friend here on Earth. Humans need it to breathe properly and keep our blood pH in check. And plants love this stuff too, because it helps them make oxygen through photosynthesis. Obviously, we can't survive without it. Without methane either. However, this little gem got some scientists buzzing with excitement even more due to the discovery of some funky dimethyl sulfide gas molecules in its atmosphere. In 2023, scientists from the University of Cambridge spotted carbon-based molecules like methane and carbon dioxide hanging out on K218b with the help of JWST. This could mean that this exoplanet might feature a hydrogen-rich atmosphere and a watery surface. There's a potential whiff of dimethyl sulfide, or simply DMS, in the mix. On Earth, this stuff is usually linked to life, since it's normally produced by photoplankton in the oceans. The fact that we're picking up hints of DMS on K218b is like finding a golden ticket in the cosmic chocolate bar. Hey, kind of gives you the willies now, doesn't it? <laughs> Why is DMS so important, you ask? Well, it's a bit of a superhero on our planet, playing a crucial role in the sulfur cycle and even affecting our climate by helping clouds form. And spotting DMS on other planets could be a sign of life similar to ours. 
Looks like this planet is a nice spot, with its not that rough temperature and all the right nutrients to keep us alive. So, what's your take on its overall look? It probably took the planet a good few million years to come together. While things might heat up deep down underground, it shouldn't make a big difference on the surface. Some experts believe it could be home to a water or molten lava ocean, with a hydrogen-rich atmosphere resembling a gas giant like Uranus or Neptune. Now, This one doesn't really match our Earth's standards, since our atmosphere is mostly made of nitrogen. If there's an ocean, it's likely under a thick layer of ice and rock, which could mess with the planet's climate. Once things get really hot, the line between the ocean and the sky blurs. We're not totally sure if there's a liquid ocean on K218b, and it's tricky to see one from afar. Just looking at the planet's size and weight won't give us the answer. The whole liquid water ocean thing is up in the air. <laughs> Initially, we thought water in a supercritical state was most likely. But new observations point toward a liquid ocean. Suspicious gases like hydrocarbons and ammonia might be moving from the air into the water if there's an ocean, which could mean no clear line between the sky and the sea. But some experts say a molten rock ocean could be doing the same trick. Others think a gas-rich mini-Neptune setup could explain things too. The Hubble Space Telescope did some snooping and found that K218b is rocking an atmosphere filled with hydrogen. They think there might be some water vapor hanging out there too. But it's a bit of a mystery. Apparently, the James Webb Space Telescope got a peak and saw less than 0.1% water vapor, possibly because the planet has a dry stratosphere vibe going on. As for ammonia, it's nearly non-existent in that distant world. Methane and carbon dioxide seem to be dominant in the atmosphere, making up about 1%. But don't expect to see any other carbon oxides crashing the party. Their concentration is just a guess at this point. The atmosphere of K218b is just a small fraction of its total mass, around 6.2%, and has probably got a similar vibe to Uranus and Neptune. Haze-wise, there's not much going on, and water clouds are a bit of a mystery. They're probably icy, although there's a chance for some liquid water clouds too. Now, besides water, the atmosphere could also contain some ammonium chloride, sodium sulfide, potassium chloride, and zinc sulfide clouds, depending on what the planet is into. And it seems like things might get a bit turned up high in the atmosphere, with the temperature inversion causing a stratosphere situation, just your average day in outer space. So far, scientists have come up with several climate models this planet might have. For example, some of them think that there's the same temperature across the whole planet. Unless the planet is spinning super fast, and the temperature difference between the poles and the equator is minor. But these are all speculations at this point. The amount of radiation K218b gets from his star is similar to what Earth gets. The temperature on the planet might be anywhere from really cold to pretty warm. Whether it can support life depends on its atmosphere and clouds. Scientists think microorganisms from Earth could survive there, even with all the hydrogen. But it's still hard to tell if there's life on K218b, because the gases we usually look for might not work in its atmosphere. Scientists think the James Webb Space Telescope might be able to detect different markers of life on the planet with enough observations. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.